What is up? What is up? What is up? We are live for another incredible freaking webinar. However, we have a lot of amazing webinars, but we don't always have the one, the only from Tupelo, Mississippi, Letitia Jackson in the house. What is up, Letitia Jackson? Hi, Cody. What's going on, man? <laughs> I am so excited. I love hanging out with you. I love your energy, your positivity. As you guys are chum coming in chat, throw Letitia Jackson some love, man. She spoke at so many of my events so many stages, so many webinars, so many Zooms, so many interviews, because every time we do something together, she freaking delivers. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Cody. <laughs> Which is true, and you do, and I appreciate you. Also, if you're coming in, tonight is all about how to become a six-figure income producer, okay? So, so let us know in chat, first of all, um, put, if you're making six figures, type yes. If you're not making six figures yet, type no. Okay, be transparent, be honest, share with us what we can do to help Jeffrey, Patrick, Michael, Pamela. We've got a couple of yeses, but but Letitia Jackson, we got a whole bunch of flipping I no's. Wow. Okay? So no pressure tonight as as we turn a bunch of no's into a bunch of yeses. That's right? so. <laughs> yeah, this is exciting. Also, like um, for those that don't know, um Letitia's journey, like um she has been, she was the person that was grinding away cold door knocking businesses to sell health insurance to, to get to six figures. And then now is running a seven figure agency in Mississippi with a, with an entire staff and amazing people in her organization. And they are doing amazing things. And I can tell you, I guarantee you, Letitia did not see the life and the business she has as quickly as maybe they've, they've had it, you know, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Um, so before I throw it to her and she kind of walk through her story and how you can be a six-figure income producer and change your own story tonight, um, let us know where you're watching from in chat. Help us out. Okay, we we, we know Bonnie, Lisa, Kelly, if that you're not a six-figure income producer yet, so thank you for sharing that. But we got Vegas, Jersey, Sacramento, Chicago, Clinton, North Carolina, Florida, Delaware in the house, Kentucky, Missouri. I love it. Florida, Orlando, upstate New York, Charlotte, North Carolina, Washington, Florida, Georgia, the Florida, Georgia line, Atlanta, California, North Carolina, Mississippi, Dominican Republic. Let's go. Shelby. I love that. Uh, I was just there last week, Lincoln, Nebraska, uh, week before last, Brooksville, Indonesia, Indiana, Texas, Pennsylvania. I love it. What a good group and a good crew. I'm in Springfield, Mo. Um, I'm actually, as I have just um, bought my business partner out of our marketing company, I've transitioned from the CA building into the SAM Secure Agent Marketing <laughs> building. And this is my first day in my new office. And Leticia uh -huh. is in Tupelo, Mississippi. Leticia, what's the weather like in Tupelo right now? So right now it is warm and sunny. I think we're now high 60s, low 70s today. Okay. I got 63 and windy, which ain't too bad. That's yes. Right. It's not bad for where you are, Cody. You're right. Last time it was pretty cold there. <laughs> yes. Was there, I think, in March. I believe, was it March? Yeah. I think it was March. Yes. yes, yeah. yes so. yeah. It's it's uh, oh. it's normally it's normally pretty chilly. Yeah. It really, really is. And you know what um is cool about tonight's topic is like becoming a six-figure income producer, a lot of it is consistently get in front of people, right? Um, I did. I, I didn't use leads either. I, I, I did very cold door knocking, cold calling early in my career. Now we obviously help agents with websites and branding and leads and advertising and marketing, et cetera. Um, but Letitia Jackson is here to teach you how you can become a six-figure income producer, whether you're in Tupelo, Missouri, or Jersey at 59 and cloudy. Letitia, thank you for being on and take it away. Thank you, Cody. And I want to say thank you, everyone who's tuned in on today to learn about how you too can become a six-figure income producer. So I noticed several of you said that you have not made it there yet, but you're working on it. And so today we're going to dive deep into uh, what it took for me to become a six-figure earner. And also our agency is now, you know, trading seven figures in our agency. And I will say it was not just a walk in the park. It was several processes that I had to take in, in order to get to where I am today. So if you haven't uh, succeeded to where you want to go, just uh, take notes, tap in, and just have an open mindset. I realize what I may say today may not be a good fit for everybody, but I will say something I will say that you can take back with you um, and to implement into your business on today, okay? 
And so I'll tell you more about me. I am from Tupelo, Mississippi. I have a, a husband who I, I do love um, with all my heart. We have four children and I have been in the insurance industry for over 17 years now. And so just the last uh, four or five years of my business, uh, I decided I wanted to start an agency. And so the struggle was real. OK, I'm going to be transparent on, on this training. I, I like being honest and transparent. The struggle was real. OK, uh, I'm not sure if some of you have heard my story, but at one time, my husband and I, we could even for a dollar cheeseburger at one time. And so I'm sure some of you may have experienced that or experiencing that now. But trouble don't last always. OK, Remember, trouble does not last always. And so um, just. Keep in mind that you have to be intentional about everything that you're doing. And so I'm going to share just what I had to encounter. And so I'm going to first uh, share my screen with you. And I got some PowerPoints here I want to um, share with you on today. And so with this, we're going to dive deep into sales and marketing strategies. And for some of you who may have asked, how did you become a six-figure income producer without having a lead call. So I'm glad you asked that question. I get that question asked all the time. So I want to make sure that I just tell you what I had to do. Um, so but the first thing that I want to talk about is this, is knowing your identity in the business. And what I say about, what I mean by that is knowing your identity is so many agents get so sidetracked because you want them to provide every product and services uh, between your Medicare, your health insurance, your life insurance. You, you want to do so much at one time. But if you can just tone in and understand what your business identity is, what product and services do you want to provide? And tone it into that one thing, become very good at that. That's now you're becoming focused on what you want to focus on, what you want to provide. OK, uh, and so like for me, I'm going to say um, for me, one of the things I focus on was becoming a health insurance uh, expert. Meaning I wanted people to know me for the health insurance that I could help you save money and get better coverage. I was so focused on that was my product that I was focused on and the services I was going to provide. Uh, I say, so who are your clients? In my scenario, my client was small business owners. If you're wondering why did I choose small business owners, well, keep in mind, uh, back in 2014, 2015, when the Affordable Health Care Act became a mandate to where you had to have affordable health insurance. But for small business owners, that became a sore spot because it became very unaffordable for those who made a, a decent amount of income. So I provided a um, an off-exchange insurance to where I could save them money and get better coverage to help cover like their hospitalization types of coverage. So I knew exactly who my clients are. So let's say if it's you, if you want to do Medicare, right? Are you going to be a Medicare Advantage agent? Are you going to be a Medicare Supplement agent? Or are you going to do both? If you're going to be a life insurance agent, are you focusing more on final expense? IULs, like what services that you want to become good at? And when you become good at that one service first, then you can always add something additional on top of that. Okay. And so in this business, I understood immediately who I was. Who am I? I was the teacher Jackson that could save you money and get better coverage. I was the person you would go to when you wanted to save money on your insurance which was also my message. So I'm asking you on today, do you know your, what your identity is? Do you know what product you're, that you are providing? Do you understand where, who your clients are? You know, meaning, um, for example, if you're doing Medicare, are you focusing on the extra healthy LIS market, the SNP market, or are you focusing more on the higher end market? Who are your clients? So it took me a little while to understand this concept, but the more I understood what I wanted to do, the more I could write down what was my target, who I want to focus on, and what was my message I wanted to get across. So that's one thing I would say in this first step is to understand your identity. So many ages 
coming in wide open. And I understand you want to make money. You want to grow rapidly. But if you take this one step first, you will be become more successful, in my opinion, because you understand where you're going. You understand um, your identity of what people would know you for. So right now in Tupelo, Mississippi and surrounding areas, people know me as the health care lady, right? And how I got that name was my clients would say, that's my health insurance lady right there. I got my health insurance through her. And so this fancy name is a develop, you my healthcare lady. So from that, I, because I toned into what I wanted to do or people to know me for, I became the expert in that area. So your identity will allow you to become an expert in the area that you want to people to know you for. Now, I'm not saying you cannot do other products, but what did it do for me is because I was all for affordable health care or private health insurance. Once I got them in as a client, I can now cross sell them, right? Dental and vision. I can cross sell them life insurance. When they're returning uh, 65, I can offer them Medicare, right? So I'm not saying you cannot offer other products, but what do you want people to know you for? And as you gain clients or they become your client, then you can offer all other services. And it's a win-win because once they trust you on one product, it's easy to them to get other products from you. So remember, know your identity. So think about what that is. Think about what service and products you want to offer and want to provide. Think about who are your ideal clients. Know who you are and what's the message you want people to know you for, okay? Our next step I do want to talk about is once you know what your identity is, it's important to set your financial goals. I'm going to say it again. It's important to set your financial goals. Okay. There is nothing wrong with that. So many people say, I got in this business because I wanted to help others. Well, that is true, but you're not going to be able to pay your bills if you come and just want to help others. Truth be told, you got in this business to make money that will allow you to continue to help others. Okay. So setting financial goal is like, how much income would you like to make? Whether you want to make, you know, a hundred thousand. 200,000, 1 million, it doesn't matter what the income goal is. Everyone have a different desire of what that looks like, okay? So how much income would you want to make? And for me at that time, you know, coming from not able to afford a cheeseburger, I just wanted to pay my bills, okay? That's how where I was. I wanted to make enough money to pay my bills every month. So the bill collector would not be calling my phone saying, you owe me some money. OK, so for me, that was more like, a, you know, three to four thousand dollars a month incomes, what I was looking for. And then what time frame? So you have a short term time frame, whether you want to achieve a certain goal under one year, you have a middle time frame, you want to achieve it within five years, you have a long-term time frame that you want to achieve after five years. I know some of you probably think, well, I'm just trying to make enough money to pay my bills. And that is okay. So how much money does it take for you to pay your bills? How do you figure that out? So for me, let's say if I was selling uh, health insurance, I knew exactly what my commission level was, I knew exactly how many um, how many appointments I have to have. I knew exactly how many uh, appointments to have to close the deal to know how much money I was going to make at the end of the week. Okay, so if some of you, um, if you have not done this, it's important to know exactly how to hit your goals. Several agents fail because they have no idea how to hit the short-term goal. They just have a goal, I want to make this amount of money and say, no, well, let's just go for it. But if you be intentional on how to achieve those goals, then you can track your short-term goal, your middle-term goal, and learn to go goals. And because you put those goals down does not mean that you have to stick to those goals. Okay? So... 
think about this. What is your short-term goal? You know, if you want to make a thousand dollars a week, two thousand a week, what is that goal? And then how are you going to accomplish that goal, right? So I'm a, I'm a believer in writing a vision and making it plain. Write it down, make it plain so you can visualize exactly what that goal is. Because see, a lot of agents fail because they fail to plan. So I'm telling you to plan what you want to do. And that way it will help you to be more accountable. And it also help you to pace your business. It allows you to know where you are in the process. So when you are known we are in the process, you won't get down if you don't make a sale that day. You just know what you have to continue to do to get to what your goal is. Your goal could be, I just want to, uh, I, I need a brand new car, right? I want to pay off my bills. I want to get a new home. Whatever that goal is, it will help you stay on track to pace your business. And so I learned when pacing your business, um, it's important to know how fast you're going or how slow you're going. Right. Because sometimes people say I'm working so hard, but I'm 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 not I'm not getting where I want to go. But if you pace yourself and you're tracking what you're doing, you can find exactly what's going wrong in your business and what's keeping you from growing, what's keeping you from hitting that financial goal. OK, another thing to think about is this, too. How many sales will it take to meet your income goal? So I'm going to ask you a question. Do you know right now how many sales it take for you to meet your income goal? How many sales do it take for you to hit six figures to this day? If you have not figured that part out, you need to stop what you're doing and figure out how many sales it's going to take for you to hit your income goal. And I'm going to say six figures for the, the sake of the, the training on today. And so it's just basic simple math. Again, my numbers were, I had to have at least 20 appointments set so I could see between um, 12 to 15 sit downs so I can close at least four to five sales per week. And I knew by doing that, I would close between 10 to $15,000 a week on the average of health insurance sales. From that, I knew what my commission level was and I knew I was tracking to hit six figures or more. So again, it's important to learn how to know how many sales or how many clients you have to have in order to meet your income goal. And once you hit that goal, you always want to continue to achieve and exceed. You want to continue to hit your quotas and more. Okay, so remember, know what your identity is first, understand what you're doing, know what products and services you're going to provide, know who your clients are, know who you are and what message you want to get across to the clients, then set what that goal is for you and what time frame you want to achieve those goals. You have to, you have to be accountable in this. If you're not, you, it'd be hard for you to continue to track where you're going. You have to know where you're going. You have to track it. Know where you're going. Be accountable in this, okay? All right, from this point here too, you want to track your activity. Your activity matters, okay? Your activity matters in everything that you're doing. So if you're uh, doing leads, if you're doing seminars, educational events, door knocks, referrals, whatever you're doing, you have to track your activity so you know what your numbers are. You can't be in business and not understand how your business operate. So I'm going to give you a backstory. So when I was out in the field, I was door knocking, of course, small business owners. Okay. And, um, and my spiel was, hi, I'm Atisha Jackson. Uh, I offer affordable health insurance. Do you need low cost health insurance? That was my whole spiel. Okay. And so every time I went to start a business and I came out, I would mark one, two, three, Four, cross out five. I would mark how many businesses I actually went out and spoke to that given day. I done that Monday through Friday, okay? And so 
When I did so, I realized I had to hit at least 20 knocks a day in order to me to book my appointments. Just like if you are calling on leads, how many dials, if you're physically dialing, how many dials are you dialing to get the amount of appointments that you're actually needing to set yourself up to win? How many leads do you have to order in order for you to have the dials, in order for you to set your appointments up, in order for you to know what your closing ratio is? Also, not that tracking your business, tracking how many people actually is keeping it on the books, your consistency. You have to know all these activities in order to know where you're going. Back before I learned this, uh, these steps, y'all, I was just turning and burning, churning and burning. Buying leads uh, at a former company and, and calling them, booking my appointments, going out, seeing them and, and selling and it kept going from that. But, I, but my, my business wasn't any good. It was falling off the books. I didn't know where I was coming or going. But had I had a system that showed me how to track this and kept up with how a business operated, I would have realized that this scheme, that this not common scheme, this wasn't a good fit for what I was looking for. Not only on that, when you're tracking your business too, you want to like get the referrals. Where are your referrals coming from? Who is sending you referrals? And make that person a great referral partner because they continue to send you business. If you're going to attend an educational event or a seminar or a health fair, Know which health fair or which seminar or which event is bringing you the most value, meaning that it's getting you in front of the most people and most people are interacting with you and you're getting a great return. But the only way you're going to know what's going to work for you is that you have to do the activity to know what lead work, what seminar work, what event works for you. And then once you realize which of these marketing strategies working for you, then you want to continue to do those same type of activities. You want to you want to put more on the fire, put more into, into that activity that's bringing you the most value, bring the most clients, bring, make you the most money. Also, too, on your sales strategy, like even like when you're asking, when you're calling somebody on the phone, what are you saying? Are you tracking what are you saying on the phone? Are you tracking uh, what's working and what's not working? Like if you're saying, hi, I'm a teacher Jackson. I got your information. Did that, inf did that work for you? And find out what word works, what word does not work. Find out what's the best time of the day to door knock somebody. The best time of the day to call someone. Know what those hours are. And you have to create your business schedule around what works for depending on what type of market that you're in. And so I created me a spreadsheet to help me keep up with all of this information. And although it kept me busy door knocking in the field, I had to also schedule admin days. So you can go in to track exactly what you're doing and knowing where you are. In order to grow your business, I hear Cody said all the time, you must know your numbers. You must know where you're going. You cannot walk into a bank and ask for a loan and they ask you for, you know, what's your statement like? And you have no idea what your business strategy looks like. You have no idea what you have coming in and going out. They're going to decline you immediately. It's, a, it's going to be a no. Okay. So you must know what your activity is. It matters to your business. You want to produce income producing activities. Now, once you, once you understand on how to collect for your clients, once you they become a client of yours, once you have them on the books, you have to continue to serve. Okay. I'm a big, big believer of the 30, 60, and 90 day rule. Which, which, what I mean by that is once you enroll your client, after 30 days, you check on your client to make sure that they have their cars or their policy or whatever 
that you sold them, they have it within their possession. And you also check on them to make sure that they are okay with what they have, they understand what they currently have with you. So what that does is that creates a better relationship between you and the client because you're reaching out to make sure that they are good. So if you're selling a policy and just walking away, you're making it easy for me to come in to replace your policy because you lack serving your client. Serving your client shows that you're caring. Okay. So, and then what I normally do is, is that I must say for our uh, Medicare client, we do Medicare too in our office. Once we enroll our client, what we do is we create a package for them immediately. Okay. And in that package, we may have printed out their plan that they have they have in, the, in their folder. We also print out a welcome letter. We talk about what we discuss over the phone or in the office, what plan that they have chosen, and a thank you from us signed by me or the agent. And we and we also have other cards we put into the package so they can refer, give it to other uh, some of their um, their friends or family members. We also have put in a magnet so they can put it on their um, refrigerator, right? And we say this, put it on your refrigerator. Because you got any Medicare questions, give us a call. Don't call the way on TV, call us, okay? After 60 days, we, we call check on how's it going? Have you been to the doctor? Have you had any issues? Are you using your OTC um, benefits, right? Do you have any questions? Oh, by the way, Ms. Jones, uh, do you have any referrals you'd like to, for me to talk to? Again, you're keeping them in front of you once again. You're keeping them in mind once again. Showing, hey, I have not forgot about you. We still care. And after the 90 day rule, I've, you talk to them within um, see, 60 days to 90 days. So from that, you call them again. Check on them one more time, right? And from that, you have created 30 days, then 60 days, 180 days. Maybe I'm right, I'm sorry, 90 days. So you create a 180 day conversation or communication with your client. So that's basically half the year. What does this do for your business? You continue to have high retention. You have half of your clients. You're going to receive more referrals and you will see a massive growth in your business. No matter what are you doing, if you're selling life insurance, final expense, if you're doing health insurance, Medicare, PNC, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You can apply this to everything um, that you're doing. You must continue to serve your client. Now, these are some steps I wanted to go over with you to help you to get in the mindset of what it takes to become a six income, six figure income producer. Yes, it's going to take you to have people to talk to. It's going to take you to, to create sales opportunity, but you have to shift your mind in order to be able to have a successful business. Have to shift the way you think and shift the way you do business in order to be able to retain your business. Okay? Retaining your business is very important because you want to gain, again, referrals, but not only that, you want to also to continue to have a good name. You want to continue to have integrity. When people think about you, it goes back to what is my message? Although we say save money, get better coverage, we also say we are your trusted source. So what does that mean? That means you can trust us and we're going to be here for you at any and all times. We're providing you a lifetime of customer service. So I want you to just think about it for a moment and just realize what can you do to help your business grow. 
And for some of you who are already making six figures, I hope you are doing these steps. And if you're not, please add them to what you're already doing and watch how your business grow massively. One thing we talk about in our agency is keeping the client first at first mind. Doing what's right for your client. When you do what's right for your client and keep the integrity, the money will come. Now, I'm going to, I don't have a slide for this, but I'm going to just talk about here some. about how I became a six-figure producer when not having a lead cost, okay? What did I have to go through to get to that point, okay? So back to my story, I had very low revenue coming in. Didn't have any money at all to get started. And so I'm going to give different examples of what I had to do to get my income rolling. So I've done a lot of grassroots marketing, okay? And what's so funny about grassroots marketing is this. I had no idea what grassroots marketing was. <laughs> I called it grinding, okay? I call it, I have to do whatever I have to do to make the money for me and my family. And so I'm gonna start with the, the, with the uh, life insurance first because it's a, it's a simple process. So I saw a lot of kid policies, a lot of kid health life insurance policy, like mutual of Omaha policies, those types of policies. So I'm going to give you an example what I did, and I hope that it can help you out if you are struggling in this area or if you have agents who are struggling. This is a great way you can get in front of people. Okay. And so I actually shared this with a couple of other agents who actually implemented what I said, and I got great feedback that it is working for them, okay? So it worked for me and other agents, so it's going to work for you too if you do exactly what I say. Okay, so let's say you're struggling, you need to make some money. And I'm going to start with life insurance first because you know that brings money in real rapidly, you know, quickly. Okay, so I will go out. And I knew my goal, my focus was kid policies. Why? It was like four and five bucks, 10 bucks per child on a policy. And it was just a, a, a smaller policy. So I, my, my attitude was, if I can get 10 policies at $10 per week, I mean, $1,000 a week. Again, I'm saying it again. 10 kids policies at $10 per month would yield me $1,000 a week in commissions on a kid life policy or 20 file policies will give you a thousand dollars a week on commissions. Okay. So what did I do? So I would go to every daycare around in my city, would go to the owner or the operator of the business and said, hey, I'm Atisha Jackson. And we have this great kid policy that we'd love to offer to your staff and the parents that are here. And I would love to see if you allow me to come in and promote this in your business. And what it would do for you is it would show the parents that you really care that they are covered under your umbrella. So I love to become your partner. And they would say, yes, of course. And so I would ask them, what was the best time I can come in and sit down? So the best times for me was in the afternoons. So I would sit there in the afternoons, kind of in the corner when they come into the foyer, and I would just have um, a form to fill out, a pamphlet about kid policies, right? And then just a little banner about what I did. So remember, parents, they're in a hurry, they're in and out real fast, right? So my spiel was, hi, I partnered with ABC Daycare, and they want to make sure that everyone, every child is properly covered. Um, change your name and phone number and best time to contact me. That was it. I mean, it was like a, it was low intent, but that was it. And so from that, I would get 30 to 40 parents giving their information. And so I would call the parent. The parent would talk to me either over the phone or in part, or I go to their home. And from there, I was selling at least 10 kids policy a week, making $1,000 a week. 
So I'm going to ask you a question. So for those of you who are struggling right now, what are you doing to get in front of people? You have to be creative and think outside of the box. How many daycares for you doing final expense? How many daycares you can go in front of right now, book the appointment and sit there? Now it's going to take you more time than take more time. You're going to spend more time than money on this. But once you get your feet in the door and you start making a thousand dollars a week, then you can start spending more time in whatever you want to do. But this is a way how I was able to create an income for me. And so I had an agent who actually started doing this, doing this herself. And she said it's working out very well. But not only does it does that for, uh, for you, now the parents may need some life insurance. So now you can set them a term a whole life, right? Whatever they want. But guess what, though? The parents may need health insurance. People, do you not understand? So now you're cross-selling some of everything in at home. But once you gain their trust, you can offer anything else. Not only that, they parents may be on Medicare. So what I'm saying is it doesn't matter how you approach them. Just get in front of them. Get your product out there. Oh, by the way, it's also what I do. A great way to get in front of people if you're in a final expense market or if you're in Medicare, but you can't get your leads going, you can't get the flow going, do something that will help you get in front of people. And it may be a temporary thing for you to do, right? It's just temporary to I get what I need so I can continue to focus on what my identity truly is in the business. Okay. Um, one other thing I want to talk about is, I'm going to say the Medicare. Uh, some people do Medicare on the call. Another great way I got in front of a lot of people is I'm going to talk about the um, two things I'm going to talk about. One is become an educator because so many of your seniors, they are being bamboozled. They are getting scammed by all this misinformation that's out there. So become the educator of, of how, how it works, right? And how you can assist them. And so I would do more informal events where I would go to the churches, right? Because we know more, a lot of seniors go to church. They go to church. I'm a church girl too. They go to church. So you would get to the pastor or whoever was over the church and tell them who, which, who you are, what you do, and give your credentials. You got to be creden credentials when you're dealing with seniors, okay? Because they're very careful of, of, of their people, of, of their congregation, their members. So, and then I would set a time. This is what I learned. I didn't do a hour educational event. I would say I could come either after your Bible class or after church service on Sunday or Tuesday, whatever they had services. I would get up, create some information about some a few pointers. And I, I would address the questions that they normally had about their Medicare, right? Like, um, how can I get my Part B premium back on my check, right? What is extra help? How do I get Medicaid? Those questions right there. I wouldn't get to details of how Medicare works because you, you got to go through guidelines. But I'll find a way to talk about their pain points, right? Understanding their, their um, the networks that you can talk about without having a scope form sign. I would go talk about some of those things, say, hey, we're here to help you if you have these questions. From that, come see me. Here's my brochure. They would take the brochure from me and, got, and behold, people would start calling me saying, hey, I saw you at church. I have a question about my Medicare. Can you help me out? And because I've educated them more on their benefits that they may be approved for versus their plan, I became a trusted source because now I'm helping them to understand these benefits that they've been misled on. So from church services, church events, I will get several seniors, okay? And um, one more thing I'm going to say is these health fairs. We do really, really great at health fairs, really great at health fairs. Um, we just had one uh, recently. Well, I, was, I would say, yeah, recently back here in March in our hometown. And so what we do is, is that we know at health fairs, we have like over a thousand people come out. So it's a pretty big health fair we have in our area. But at health fair, the seniors, they're just going from table to table to table. And they really don't want to talk about that right there in front of everybody. So what do we do? We package a little 
five by seven card together with affirmation on it. We may have like some little happies within the package itself. And we say, hey, you're welcome to register for our giveaway, right? A giveaway. So we gave away a recliner chair back here in March, okay? So all the seniors love the recliner chair. It'll come by our booth. They will fill the form out. It was their name, phone number, you know, email address, address. And of course, if they want you to contact them back about something, they will say, call me back about my Medicare or whatever they wanted to talk about. And they would drop it off into the buggy, right? So guess what? We now have captured leads without even talking to them about what all we do. And for those who do not want you to call them back, they wouldn't check it off, okay? So when we got back from, from our health fair, we had over, I think, I want to say 600 people to register with us just for the chair alone. Again, 600 people to register just for the chair alone. But from that, half of them, 300 of them said, I want to talk to you about something. So that's 300 people said, call me back about something. And so we're creating leads at no cost to us. So yes, we spent money by buying the giveaway, but we didn't spend money on our leads. And no, I'm not saying you have to give away a, a recliner chair. We just always creative in what we do. But it can be a little nice basket that you can give away of goodies, household goodies to register. Now, I will say these leads, there are low intent leads, okay? There are low intent leads. But out of 300 people, what do you think, how I many you could actually, you know, transfer over into an actual client? Okay, but we also do that for our, our health insurance as well. Wherever we go, we're always doing a giveaway. It may seem it may seem cheesy or cliche, but the people love it. They love it. So again, these are great ways that you. It could be ten percent. Yes, I would say between five and seven percent. You will see a return on your on those leads. Yes. And if you're in a life insurance market or ACA market, those leads are still good. You don't have to get rid of them. You continue to put them in your. So when we get those leads, we put them to our CRM. And we have a constant list of people who actually said, call me back about something at some point. And so our team can constantly call on people until they say, hey, quit calling me or I'm good. I don't need your assistance, whatever that they need. Right. But we're always first of mind when it comes down to something we do in our community. Okay, so I'm going to open up the um, for, for Q and A here. I see we have a couple of questions here. See, can I get them all? So I see Miss Lisa had a question. She says, "What if the parents have health insurance from their job? Would the health insurance we offer even compare?" That's a great question, Miss Lisa. So uh, we have found several times that some employees do offer their employees health insurance. And um, you have to ask the question, is the health insurance 9.5% more or less than their income? If it's more than 9.5% of their income, then employee income considered unaffordable for the individual. And then yes, you can write them up an ACA plan. So an example, let's say the person make $100 a week. Their insurance cannot cost them no more than $9.50 per week. If it's 10 bucks, it's, it's too expensive for them to afford. Then they can opt out of the employee insurance and get the insurance through the ACA. Okay, here. Someone mentioned what are the high demand customers you mentioned earlier. High demand customers. I'm not sure what you mean, Tracy, if you can elaborate what you mean by high demand customers. Ms. Pamela asks, that's the same as permission to call to speak about Medicare when they register for the raffle. Yes, yes, you can use that, yes. Call to speak about Medicare, that is correct. I just got a little bit more creative with mine and added um, life and Medicare and ACA. I, I, I added every line of business that we do uh, on our form. 
daycares rotate. Ms. Kelly asked, did you rotate daycares or go once a month? So no. So what I would do, um, Ms. Kelly, is this. When I went to the daycares, I would just set a date up, uh, maybe like two weeks in advance so that, so that, so that the um, daycare provider knew and, and the actual parents knew as well. If I had time, I would also hang up a flyer within their sign out area today out there where I would be there. And so um, if the daycare have high turnover or a new new um kids coming in, then I may go back, you know, maybe once every six months to see those new pa uh, parents if they allow me to. Okay. So yeah, so. Yeah, so so ask your question again, Ms. Pamela. So yeah, they understood that they was doing a raffle, but they also said, please call me back about, and they could check off a box off what they want to talk about uh, on, on that raffle ticket. So that's why I say it was low intent because some people was actually trying to win, win the prize, but then those who really want you for them to call them back, they would check it off and give you permission to call them back. Okay. So I'm getting some good feedback here. I'm seeing that everyone is um, enjoying what we're talking about. We have any other questions? Cody, you want to chime in or anything? I want to chime in and say that I love watching you train. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so good. Thank you. Thank you so much. And it's creative. Like you found ways to help prospect to prospect to help people and make money without, you know, the traditional models of getting in front of people. Like you got creative, which I think that's a testament to like successful agents that don't have money. Agents that don't have money, they want to be successful. They have to get creative. And and you did, you know, without having a bunch of money. And now you have more money than you had then because you <laughs> got creative and you hustled. You know, yeah, that is correct. You know, what I find myself is that um, doing these type of events, it what it did was I organically became out came from the field. So because I planted so many seeds of door knocking, doing all the activities, my phone started ringing off the hook to where I could not even go back out and feel because I was mm. in my desk enrolling people. So at some point you would you would not have to go back out and feel because you're constantly you plant your seed. Now you're now you're going to harvest which what you plant. Yes. Yes. So, and um, I do want to share this with everyone as well. For those of you who may want to reach out to me some more, um, if you want to dive deeper into your model and what we can do to assist you, you need help building your agency to assist figures or, or maybe seven figure uh, agency. Um, you want to have a, a better proven sales and marketing strategies or create income producing activities. You want to learn how to do a massive referral partnership or even creating more leads at no cost to you. Here's my email address. Email me and it says dive deeper. Just dive deeper. I love it. Leticia at jacksoninsuregroup.com. That's phenomenal. Yes. Well, Leticia, you're amazing. I appreciate you being a part of this tonight. You do a phenomenal, phenomenal job. Um, anything else you'd like to add in closing from tonight's webinar? I just want to say that for those of you who are in this business, I've learned it's important to just trust the process. Don't give up and don't compare yourself to what the next agent is doing. Just stay on course with what you are doing and watch how your business explode by doing the right thing. Be so, encouraged. Just be encouraged. Also, it was it was Leticia at Jackson Insure Group .com. Yeah, to see it. Yes. Okay, cool. Perfect. I had a couple of questions about it. So great. I'm actually going to see okay. that again. All right. So um, that is it. Cody, it's been fun. Um, you all um, plug in. Pl Cody has so many great things going on. Plug into what Cody's got going on. Um, he would not lead you in the wrong direction. Uh, he has been a great mentor of mine. And I'm just so thankful for him to allow me to be on this platform with you all today. Appreciate you, Leticia. You're amazing. Thank you for being on. on Thank the you so much.
And thank you all for being on tonight. Happy Monday. Happy May 1st. Go do something special in May. Have a phenomenal week. And we will see you on the next webinar. Bye. Bye. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. I'm so excited for today's CA Power Player Podcast. I'm your host, Cody Askins. We got a special guest. He is back on the channel talking about how to sell life insurance from home. Here's what I, well, here's what I love about this person. Yeah, I'm telling you, this will be the, one of the best.